today on Blind Date. I'm so bummed. Well, hello there. Oh, I'm happy now. He's back for a second chance. I am the anchovy of men, and that is Ken. But like anchovies, he's an acquired taste. You're like Gary. Oh, I'm sorry. Plus, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> this one looks promising. I can't promise that we will have sex, yeah. but I promise that we will have a good time together. All right. It all begins now. Right on. <laughs> on Blind Date. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Roger Lodge, and welcome to Blind Date. You know us. We're the show that's giving Cupid a run for his money. Let's get right to it, shall we? And today we'll start with Betsy and Clint. Now, Betsy's a transplant from the Midwest who says that she wants a manly man with traditional values. Well, her day, Clint says that he's a free spirit who lives life by his own rules. I'm a pretty energetic, outgoing, fun person. Um, I like to, I will do anything. I want a man. I want a guy who is a guy and who is masculine and is secure and confident in that and treats me like a woman. I am so open with my emotions. It is ridiculous. I'm not a first date sex girl. I am not a second, third date sex girl. Casual sex, I think, is a pretty damn good thing. I'm a follower and a believer of Jesus, and that's something that's important to me, and I hope that somebody I date seriously would share that importance to them. I'm sensing different philosophies here. Why don't we all keep our fingers crossed on this one? I write a lot of uh, politics, uh, philosophy. Betsy? Clint. Pleasure to meet you. You are? Clint. Yeah, we're right about you. Well, I hope it's gonna be a fun day. So do I. <laughs> you ready to go? Yeah, let's all go. Right. Are you a religious person? No, I mean, I have a faith that's important to me. Do you follow, like, any uh, de denomination? You got your Baptists and, you know, yeah. your Southern Baptists and your Methodists and your yeah. Lutherans and, I don't know, First Lutherans. I Lutheran. would say that I like Jesus. Dana, Clint. Clint, nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Okay, so you guys ready to dance to a little hip hop? Sure. Check out, you know, your moves. This is going to be an audition, all right? So you're going to join me on the chair. She's got the part. <laughs> have a seat, have a seat. They might want a guy who can't dance. Either. And uh, guess what? You must entertain us. <laughs> oh, Okay, you don't need to be dance. You just freestyle, but show me oh. what you got. <laughs> okay, eye contact, eye contact. Uh-huh. Okay. Keep going, keep going. Okay. <laughs> I give you, I give him an E for effort. E for effort. Thank you. <laughs> I really just give you props for getting out there and dancing. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, no, that really sucks when they make you do something, or when someone, someone like tells you to do something oh, you don't yeah. want to do, you kind of have to do it. So. Exactly. No, that was yeah. that was fun that you just kind of gave it a go. Generally, not my uh, forte. Did you do school? Are you in school? I work for a Southern California gas company. And like meter, oh, I, I buy gas from them. Yes, you do. <laughs> Everybody does. Uh, yeah, it's good. It, it keeps me active. It's like 10 miles a day. Oh, that's yeah. kind of cool. That's not too bad. I mean, it pays decent for the amount that I work. Like, I'll get paid for 30 hours, but I'll work 20. Well, that's not a bad deal at all. No, it's not. Deal breaker for you. It's a deal breaker. For me, we have to have very congruent beliefs as far as um, what we believe about our faith and what our religious backgrounds are. Okay. Because what about you and your passions? Yeah, I'm really into philosophy, and I, you know. <coughs> are you a fan of any certain Philosophers? school of thought, a philosopher? Or? Manual Kant. Who? Manual Kant. Kant. Yeah, I'm reading. One of the basics. Yeah. yeah I'm reading uh, the Critique of Judgment right now. Mm-hmm. My favorite quote from that book is, laughter is an arise affection from a strained expectation that is suddenly reduced to nothing. You know, just from the way that you talk, you seem, uh, I don't know what's the right word to say, so. Very, like, I, I guess conservative would be it. I mean, like, the traditional values and things like that. I mean, it's very, uh, like that. Oh, wow. 
What is this? Chicken pizza. Hey, okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what? I need another beer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll definitely get another beer here. Or maybe four. <laughs> or maybe four. Okay. What don't you like about me? I don't know if we are congruent enough on a lot of core foundational beliefs okay. to have a future outside of a blind date. Okay. What don't you like about me? Come on, lay it on me. The thing that might not attract me to you the most is that I just don't feel like you want, you're letting yourself have as much fun as you possibly could. Uh-huh. Let's do it. One, two, and three. There you go, babe. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's freaking awesome. Whoa! Go, 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 go. Come on. Finish it. I think that we did pretty quality. I think we did okay. You're a quality guy, Clint. Oh, you're a quality girl, but it's... Even better when I drink. Oh, uh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol just confuses me so much. See, alcohol should never confuse you because alcohol is real. Oh, really? Yes, in vino veritas. Huh? It's Latin for in wine there is truth. You're so smart. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's enough there to explore. I, I, I agree. Okay. I think we should hang out again. We should definitely hang out and again. And then see what happens from that. Clint, I will go out on a second date with you. Really? I can't promise that we will have sex, yeah. but I promise that we will have a good time together. All right, good deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, look out there, Clint. Hey, you're the one pushing me off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm completely sober. I'm sure you are. Mm -hmm. This is your home. You know, I had a lot of fun tonight. I had a great time. You should definitely give me a call. Tomorrow. <laughs> okay, tomorrow. tomorrow. Bye. Adios. <laughs>
I'm gonna fix you up with Stacy. She's a fashion designer who says she's always happy. And when it comes to guys, offbeat is just fine. He doesn't have to make me feel normal because I'm not normal. Normal's boring. <laughs> I'm the black sheep of my family for sure. I'm kind of like the birthday cake with the candles that never go out. He's definitely got to be colorful and I definitely like, you know, the artsy kind of guy. I'm a bit on the eccentric side. Oh, come on. This could be the girl Ken's been looking for. I mean, she's got a pulse on everything. Hi. Hi, how are you? Ken. I'm Stacy. You look nice. Thank you. Nice shirt. Thanks. I feel be a little colorful today. Are you ready to go? Absolutely. Do you have a hard time finding it? No, it's pretty pretty <laughs> convenient. It's explanatory. It's LA. I'm a native, so. Oh. The mean of life to Stacy is colon is to feel good, make others feel good, to smile, be happy. Your glowing effinescence. Yeah, that kind of thing. Just by saying hello to somebody, you can make their day. Just by saying hello to somebody, you can make their day. I'm so bummed. Well, hello there. Oh, I'm happy now. Like that, that type of thing. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Wow. I would love to go to London someday. London, England. That's the wrong door. Wrong door. Oh, <laughs> my bad. I'm sorry. Hi. Hi. Hey, I'm Ellie. I'm Ellie Stacy. 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 Nice to meet Hi. you, Ellie. Hi, Ken. Ken. Hi, Ken. Hi. I'm going to teach you guys today how to brush teeth on cats and dogs. These are the toothbrushes. Can you see the little, little nubbies here? OK, I'm going to have you guys brush each other's teeth. You have to put your teeth together, dude. <laughs> Open up. <laughs> How does that feel? Clean. I did not have dental relations with that woman. <laughs> I'm really... <laughs> Is this good? Ow! Ow! Oh, sorry. Did you get that you know, you, you're like gagging it. Oh, I'm sorry. Now you got a little... Thank you, that was really fabulous. I tried. Maisie, oh, I'm gonna like hold that, your- Oh, you like that, don't you? No, Maisie, I'm gonna hold your mouth. <laughs> All right, like this. That's it, that's it, you got it. Wow. Yummy. I am capable. I'm not a dog. We can't mate. <laughs> but, maybe we could, but maybe I could be like the stepfather or something. Anchovies. Okay. Most people don't like anchovies. Most people can't stand anchovies. But there's a small percent of people that like anchovies on their pizza. I am the anchovy of men. I'm not pepperoni, I'm not mushrooms, I'm anchovies. So most women don't want an anchovy kind of guy. But there's a few quirky, select, you know, femme fatales out there that do. So I am the anchovy of men. And that is Ken. Well, I can relate to that because I'm definitely a free spirit myself. That's, and I know that's that cool. that scares off. I'm not scared. I'm, well, no, I'm but a... it can scare off like a hearty percentage of men. So for the women that are out there that haven't per se like loved your eccentricities, there will be somebody that does. Like it's not a bad thing. I hope that somebody's means. not that far from me. <laughs> I was wondering if I could hold your hand. I that would be very nice, and I would definitely appreciate that. But I'm I, not on the first date. Really? Really? Can I hold your foot? Can you hold my foot? Yeah. <laughs> I want to hold your foot. What are you gonna do with my foot? Just hold it, protect it, watch hold over it like the mother protect hen. It. I'm sorry. I don't want to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> well, this is where I live. 
kind of figured that. I know, because you picked me up here and all. <laughs> wow. Show me the way to your domicile. My domicile? Yeah. So I was wondering maybe I could, you know, see you again? Well, that is left up to the gods. <laughs> I want to go out with you again. I really do. Well, I appreciate that. That's nice. I will definitely consider it. We should probably like exchange numbers or something. So we I don't give my phone number out. Are you joking? I'm very serious. You're gonna have to email me. I know that sounds so lame. No, deja vu. Oh my god. No, no. You didn't just say that, did I you? I didn't really? say that. I don't give my phone number out. I'm in your house. You let me in your house. <laughs> Really nice meeting you. It's been nice meeting you too. Thank you. Sure, you have a good night. Thank you. Take care. Okay, good night. Bye. Bye. Drive safely. I will. Well, he didn't get her number, but he got her email. Does that mean anything? Now, I guess we're gonna find out when we come back. Coming up. Things are going pretty well. Things got a little wild at the end of the night. When daters date again, look out. I did text message him afterwards and told him sorry for being drunk. A dater update coming up. You are the guy. You're up my stage. There's a small percent of people that like anchovies on their pizza. I am the anchovy of men. So most women don't want an anchovy kind of guy. But there's a few quirky, select, you know, femme fatales out there that do. Something tells me Stacy will be holding the anchovies. But let's all keep hope alive and pray for a miracle. Ken is definitely the anchovy of men. She was really cute. She looked like a certain celebrity I like. Really nice and artsy. He is a human cartoon character. I enjoyed brushing Stacy's teeth. She had great teeth. I don't like having my fingers in strange places and his mouth being one of them. Stacy seems to really appreciate my intelligence. It is a lot to stomach. I mean, it's a lot to swallow. Stacy, I asked for your phone number. You gave me an email. But she gave me a chance. He's a total nut job. I hope to turn that email into a phone number. There will not be a second date with Ken. Nah, that's too bad. Looks like the Kenster's 0 for 2. But I'm not giving up. And hopefully his third time will be the charm. All right, coming up. When a date on our show works out, can the daters keep the love alive? Well, we're going to find out next in a dater update. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. Now, as you know, some of our daters get along very well on their blind dates. Take Jenny and Steve. These two really enjoyed each other's company and a few cocktails as well before ending up back at Jenny's place. But what happened after that joyous occasion? Well, it's time to get some answers. Yeah, Jen and I did go out on a second date. Uh, I gave her a call. We really wanted to see how it was going to work out. The first night we went out, we went out, we went downtown from my house and went to dinner. Um, went and had a beer at one of the bars and then came back to my house and watched a movie and talked and got to know each other a little bit better. So I actually stayed over on a second date. Um, yeah, we uh, made out a little bit. And Steve did come down another time and we went out on a third date. It was more with a bunch of my friends. We all just went out drinking and dancing all night and came back to my house for an after party and passed out. On that third date, uh, Things were going pretty well. Things got a little wild at the end of the night, but the next morning, I was, you know, so-so about her. I did text message him afterwards and told him sorry for being a drunk ass. Give me a call when you get a chance. And I never heard from him. After three dates, you know, um, Jen and I really aren't on the same wavelength, and I'm probably not gonna, I'm not gonna call her again. Oh, that's too bad. I mean, a girl who drinks to the point of passing out, 
Sounds like such a keeper. All right, that'll do it for today's show. I'm Roger Lodge. I'll see you tomorrow.